Hey everyone, it's Carrie from Pardons Heritage Homestead. I wanted to touch on a subject, forgive me, I'm kind of out of breath. I just got in from feeding my farm, my chickens and turkeys and whew, taking a few minutes because I have a busy day today. But I wanted to touch on a subject not spoken much by homesteaders. We ended up becoming a different type of homesteading compared to most people who can live an ordinary life. I once did until June of this year when everything changed for me. Um, I halfway through my canning, I was just about done with my season and my husband ended up getting a doctor's report that changed everything for us. We found out in June that he became a diabetic. At this point, I felt like my knees just got knocked out from under me because like I said, I had everything just about finished for my season, for my stocking for winter, and that all had to change. Uh, about 75% of my stocks that I canned, he could not have. And that was, in a sense of it to me, at, at the point, it was devastating. I'll just be honest, it was absolutely devastating I kept thinking, here I am, a homesteader. What am I going to do now? And at this point, I was very green. I had no idea what to do. And so I knew the first thing I had to do was clear my shelves. I had to start over. Uh, my baked beans, my potatoes, all of this had to come off the shelf. And then there was the thought, what am I going to do with all this? Fortunately, um... I took what we couldn't have and I blessed my family with it. So they're pretty much set for winter. But besides that, um, my next thought was, what am I going to put in its place? How am I going to do this? We learned for the first couple months what triggered him. We found that my husband was very carb sensitive. Sugar was an absolute no. I had to learn different types of sugars. There were some with such a bad aftertaste. It was really gross. Um, I now, six months later, have found that we really enjoy, there's three types. Splenda ended up taking my husband's sugar in ways that I wasn't comfortable. Neither was he, so we ended up trading that off. So far, he does good with monk fruit, with... Uh, xylitol in it the land toe i think it's called brand um alios he's okay with this one and sucralose um he does seem to be okay with that but the thing i couldn't think of is now that i have a diabetic husband what do i stock my shelves with what can i use today Six months later, I'm going to take you on something I've never done before. Um, I'm really not comfortable into doing a pantry tour. But if this helps somebody, then this is what I'm going to do today. To give you somewhat of an idea what you can, can I mean, what you can do for your special needs. We live a low-carb, no-sugar diet. And this is where we've been able to control my husband's sugar with within two hours after a meal. He is less than 120 on his blood sugar. So if this can help somebody else, I decided to go ahead and step out of my comfort zone and see what I can do for you. I am still learning. I still have so much to learn, but I can teach you what I've learned this far. I'm going to take you to my dry dehydrated pantry and some of the things we've done i'll take you into my canning now mind you we are a small grade homestead um, we don't have the big widespread like most everybody else does again i'm still learning what to put on my shelf what not to put on my shelf um, what i'd like to do more of that uh, worked very well and now the season's over, it gives me some idea next year what I need more of, what I need less of, what we didn't particularly like, those things. And then I have my dry good area and very little store-bought. Before I get into this, I will tell you, one reason I started doing this is 
I pay attention to um, the nutritious labels on packages. It was highly disturbing when I would read the fiber content and the carbohydrates, subtracting these to get my nets. Um, I would find some products were no sugar, but when I read the ingredients, I found hidden sugar. That did not go over with me very well. I don't know how much of sugar, whether it's low grade, high grade, it's kind of, I didn't want to take any risk. So I started figuring out what can I do for myself with eliminating some of the products that these stores have that I, I, some of them I couldn't even pronounce. Um, the other thing I learned on these nutritious labels, the products labeled sugar-free, there is a product they use called Maltitol. And I'm going to here to tell you that Maltitol was just like handing my husband a bowl of regular sugar. It spiked him so bad. And so these, this is where I came from, knowing all that to where I'm at six months later to say, nope, there's got to be a way I can do this for myself. So with that, we're going to take you on my pantry tour before my challenge show you what I'm kind of working with and what I may be adding later or into my new year mind you some of this stuff is so unorganized and honestly after Christmas uh, into the new year the first thing on my list is organizing my pantries because they're driving me crazy so let's go on our tour Okay, this is my dehydrated sections. i um, not going to show you all of this because, like I said, it is so unorganized. But I'm going to show you, like, this is our parsley that was homegrown. I dehydrated it. Um, are my garlic. Now, you can do this two ways. You can grow your own or you can store by them. And I ended up dehydrating them and powdering them. I love the flavor that it gives for garlic powder along with my onion powder. I have a stock of dehydrated onions that I can actually powder down to make more to keep that going because I go through that a lot. I have things from dehydrated celery, mushrooms, um, just all sorts of things from my teas. Um, and me, I'm not a diabetic, so but I decided that if I do, because I decided to ride this train with my husband, I needed it for my own health. It helped me lose weight. I make my own pasta, but I use this very moderately. He can't have this, but it would save the cost for me to have my own in my own moderation, leaving the special type of pastas that he can have, cutting our costs. So this is my dehydrated sections. And then I have my pre-mixes where I make my own um rubs and everything where I can control the sugar. We use sugar substitutes so I can add my own mixes. I have my mullins, which is our herbals to help us through cold and winter seasons, different tea blends. So these are things I can do for myself. I know what's in it. It's no hidden ingredient and I'm still working on a whole bunch more for this. Next, I'm going to take you to my can and baking dry goods section. So these are the special flour mixes, um, other ingredients that I use. My husband uses the carb quick instead of biscuit. Um, it works so much better where he can have biscuits. I try to normalize our life as much as possible, but I have to go into totally different um, flower bases and all that will suit him and his special needs. I have very little store-bought cans. I don't trust it. There's so much hidden stuff in it on top of things that I can't even pronounce. So these are the ones like my tomato paste, uh, tomatoes. I didn't get enough tomatoes this year, so I had to resort down to something else. And I'm going to see what happens next year. And my next step is I'm going to take you into the canning pantry. Now, this is our canning pantry. This is where a lot of people are not quite sure. And even I, at the time, I wasn't sure 
what I was going to be able to put on this shelf. I could think of so many things we could use, but he, we can't use it all. So I had to be very creative in figuring out ways to be able to accommodate this pantry for him and I and where he could be safe. So over here, we have our meat sections. I have canned tuna, beef chunks for our beef stews. I have our hamburgers. I have our chilies. Forgive the lighting. This is my dark room. I have my chickens. I have ground sausage. I'm not sure I'm going to do that one again, but I have like two jars left. Some of this was still from last year I'm working on, and I'm coming up with new things uh, every time. Sorry, trying to get this focused in. I apologize for this. I don't know what happened with my phone, but it doesn't want to focus. There we go. Okay, so starting at the top. Now the corn on this side over here. This was last year's stock, and we have to use this very moderately. Um, that is one of the simple carbs that go straight to my husband's blood sugar. So we use that very sparingly. That's going to last me for quite a while. Green beans are pretty much a free-for-all for him. They are very safe. Um, I've got tomato juice over here. This wound up being very good. The, we use butternut squash in replacement of our potatoes for sweet potatoes. He cannot have potatoes whatsoever. It's been very hard on his sugar, so we've eliminated it. We've turned to pumpkin and butternut squash. Up here is my new one that I started doing, and oh my gosh. Holy smokes, Dijon mustard. Making it myself. It is so much better. I have a preference, which is Grey Poupon, but my homemade, mm, I don't think I'll ever buy again. So I absolutely love that, and that is a definite do again. We have our dill pickles and then our squashes. The carrots we have, we use very sparingly. Again, it's one of those sugars, once cooked, that could be very damaging. Down here, I have all of my broths. I absolutely need to do more chicken or a poultry broth. I have a turkey that I'm going to be doing before long, so I'll be using the bones from that to make in my poultry or chicken broth. But I have bone broth. This is extremely beneficial. I know what's in it. It's so much healthier. So I went and was blessed with some kettle bones and decided to go ahead and make up our bone broth. Over here, I have our beans. These are considered a complex carb. And what this means is they are extremely well with fiber. They still are a high carb, but they break down slowly. Again, we use these in moderation, but he seems to be okay with this. So we have our black beans, we have our little red beans, we have pinto and navy beans. Down here, I made French onion soup, and oh my gosh, y'all, this is amazing. Homemade French onion soup, which he can absolutely have using our bone broth. I have ham and bean soup, and I have ham and black-eyed pea soup. Over here, we have not enough absolutely not enough. I go through tomato sauce. I don't particularly like to go into buying the stores because again, they're one of the products with the hidden sugar. Um, these have their own natural sugar and I like to be able to do my own. Plus I like the flavor. I keep my canning very basic. And the reason for that is I tend to add the ingredients I want to as I'm cooking. One that I don't have, that I did make, I absolutely need more of, is homemade ketchup. That ketchup was so spot on to Heinz ketchup that I need to do that again. And again, it was sugar-free, completely sugar-free. So I have definitely got to do that. I have some tomato juice, no added ingredients in that one. I have my homemade tomato paste. Again, I know what's in here. There's no added sugar. It's just its own naturals. I use this in moderation to make my own pizza sauce. And I may adventure, actually, 
into making pizza sauces. So these are things I can add to my pantry and be able to know what I can and can't do. Again, six months, I'm still learning. I have some jars of greens. I have um, jalapenos. These are all things that we can definitely use and so much more that I can learn. So I'm going to take you back to the kitchen and we will chit chat some more. Okay, so as you've seen, it's not very big right now. I have recently had to start over, like I stated earlier. So I'm still adding more. Some I have to wait until the new growing season, but I have some ideas of what I want to put on my shelf. It, take, it takes time to do this. I'm still learning how basically to bake my own breads that's safe for him. Um, again, I can eat what I'd like, but I watch what I eat because I like the new me basically now. Um, so as I go on learning, I'm going to share with you some of the things that might help you for your homestead if you have situations like ours. Like ours. Um, I really seriously hope that what I am sharing with you might help somebody, if, if just one person. I understand how it feels to feel completely devastated, not knowing what to do. It does take time. I am gaining so much more knowledge, even though I still have so much more to learn. I am basing my gardens outside based by what is going to be able to help my husband because unfortunately this disease is not short term. This is the rest of his life. So I have to base this homestead to accommodate him and I'm happy to do, to do actually do that. So if you like what I am sharing with you, please like subscribe hit that share button see if you can help somebody else by sharing these videos um, if there is something you would like to know let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you if i know it i'll i'll help you if i don't i will let you know i'm still learning like i said there's so much more i am still learning to be able to share with you I have some ideas that <clears throat> come new garden season next year when I do my canning, I'm going to share these canning uh, products with you to put on your shelf. And I'm hoping by next year, next winter, Lord's willing, I will be more prepared than I am now. But I'm still at this point comfortable to start our challenge at, after Christmas. Some ways I'm already started. The reason I say after Christmas is because I am doing a special security, bo security board. I, I have a hard time naming that. I, I, I'm I, actually making that for us for Christmas Eve and Christmas dinner. It's just the two of us, so I'm doing something special. And that's going to require me to go grocery shopping, so that would ruin my challenge. But for the most part, I've already started. I'm already making my list on new things that I can make to add to our shelf that will be more beneficial and more cost efficient for us to do ourselves than buy it from the store. Because this style here, this lifestyle now, many of you already know, is super expensive. And personally, I, it's hard to afford. I have to do what I have to do, but if I can cut my costs doing things for myself, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I look forward to working with you more. Again, I hope this helps somebody. May God bless each and every one of you. Until next time, much love for Parton's Heritage Homestead.